Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello, podcast listeners. It's that time of the year when hates and boogers go about in the dark, scaring young and old alike. Which means it's time for Rod and me to give you some ghost stories. And this week we've got two of them, don't we, Rod? Yes, we do. We're going to tell you a great story here about the tale of the Wampus Cat. And Steve, this sounds like a very interesting story, too. Oh, it is. Our first story, as Rod said, is about a strange and mysterious beast said to roam the mountains and valleys of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina, the Wampus Cat. Well, it's said that at certain times of the year, people in the area would hear terrifying howls up in the hills. Notice farm animals disappear. Things left out at night, you know, like rakes, hose, buckets, clothing on the clothesline and all that. Well, that all be knocked over or destroyed. These were signs that the wampus cat had been around. What is a wampus cat? Well, according to old Cherokee stories, the wampus cat, or the Ewa, was at one time a beautiful Cherokee woman. Now, she was married to a Cherokee warrior who would often leave with the other men of the village to go hunting for food for the tribe. As part of their bargain with nature, the men, prior to each trip, would gather in a circle in the woods to ask forgiveness for the lives of the animals that they were about to kill. And these rituals were strictly for the men, women not allowed to be present. Well, that didn't suit this particular Cherokee woman. She was a very curious person. She begged her husband to reveal the secrets of the magic that provided her and the rest of the village with food, but to no avail, as her husband always refused her requests. She could not stand Rod not knowing, so on one night she decided to go to that sacred site prior to a hunt and just see for herself what was going on. Well, she got a hold of an old cougar skin, and wrapped it around herself and took off for the woods, as quiet as a mouse. Eventually, she managed to make it to where the men were gathered, and they were there saying their prayers and following the ancient rituals. She waited. She watched. She listened as the night went on, creeping closer and closer and closer in order to hear every word. However, she got just a little bit too close. One of the shamans spotted her there in her cougar skin cloak and ordered the men to grab her and bring her before him. Well, the shaman decided to punish the woman for breaking taboo by casting a spell on her. That old cougar skin, well, it became her skin, and she became a cougar woman, cursed to live alone in the woods forever, never again to enjoy the company of another human being. And so, from that day forward... The Cherokee woman has roamed the Appalachians as the Wampus Cat in a state of anger for being changed into that beast. She steals or destroys animals and goods at farms and houses all over the mountains in anger at being cast out from Cherokee society and makes a pitiless howl that can be heard for miles around, doomed to wander Appalachia forever. Now, Rod, some say the Wampus Cat is just a reversal of the word catawampus, meaning an unknown animal lurking about in the woods, or as a type of mountain lion, since in North Carolina, mountain lions were often referred to as catamounts. In any event, if you're out and about in the woods, especially this time of the year, and you hear, off in the distance, a terrifying howl, remember that the older folks in East Tennessee would tell you that someone is going to die and be buried in the next three days, and it might be you. Hello, Rod. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just enthralled with this story. Oh, good, good. That's what we wanted. I was enthralled with it. I was going to make a comment, and then I thought to myself, I better not say anything after this. <laughs> I was going to say, serves that woman right for being such a... <laughs> serves her right. A nosy woman. No, seriously, what I was going to say afterwards was you were saying that terrifying how 
This goes along with the old people saying and and all of uh, mountain lions and cougars of what old people say around here about it sounding like a young girl or a teenage girl howling off in the distance. Mm -hmm. Uh, The cry. I've heard a cougar before. I've heard a cougar before, and it's a it's a whale is what it is. It's a whale, and it sounds like a teenager. It sounds like a teenage girl before, you know, maybe the voice has changed or something like that, but it's a very high-pitched kind of whale, wailing sound, and it's, uh, it's blood-curdling is what it is. It'll scare you to death. It was the wampus cat. It probably was. <laughs> well, we have another story that you're going to tell us about. Oh, yes. The Major Graham Mansion. And if you don't know where the Major Graham Mansion is, we're about to tell you because we're going to travel to Withful, Virginia, where in the late 1700s, settler Joseph Baker set about establishing a homestead close to the current intersection of Interstate 77 and Interstate 81 east of town. A baker built himself a log cabin there, growing corn and raising livestock and generally making a life for himself. A part of Baker's property included slaves who worked in the fields and helped him run a still. Mr. Baker promised two of his slaves, Bob and Sam, their freedom on his death. Apparently wanting to help speed the process along and gain their freedom, these two men dispatched Mr. Baker and hid his body in the sour mash of the still. Well, the news of the murder soon spread. Because after all, how long can you hide a body in a still? Well, Steve, how long can you hide a body in a still? Well, not very long, obviously, because uh, they got news of the murder pretty quickly. That's right. And when word reached the authorities, they captured Bob and Sam and promptly lynched them from a hickory tree on the Baker property. Now, to this day, locals believe that Joe Baker and the two slaves continue to haunt the property. Now, after Baker's death, the cabin and land eventually made its way into the hands of the Graham family. Squire David Graham was born in 1800, his father Robert having come to this country from County Down in Ireland in 1774. In 1826, Squire David bought the property from the Baker family and built his house on the site of the old cabin, this house eventually becoming known as the Major Graham Mansion, named after Squire David's son, Major David Pierce Graham, an officer in the Confederate military during the Civil War. Now, Major Graham was born in the house in 1838. Now, the house contains both a panel in the attic floor through which men could meet and a secret third floor room to conduct military meetings during the Civil War. And a basement of horrors, including a shackle room for hard-to-handle slaves. Now, the mansion later was sold to other, let's say, more colorful owners over the years. One of these was a law professor by the name of Reed Fulton, who owned the house from the 1940s to the 1970s. Now, when we say colorful, we mean colorful, don't we, Steve? Oh, yeah. Well, it's said that Fulton lived in the house with no electricity or running water for years, amassing a huge library of books kept on homemade bookshelves all through the house. Oh, and by the way... Reed Fulton apparently didn't like clothes either since he (laughs) ran around the house naked, or as they say around here, buck naked. Now, Rod, what's the difference between naked and naked? And this is a real Appalachian thing. What is the difference? Well, naked, I think, means you've got a little bit of some clothes on. Naked means you ain't got nothing. No, no, no. Naked means you ain't got no clothes. Okay. Naked means you ain't got no clothes and you're up to something. Well, I guess I <laughs> failed in that part of knowing the difference between naked and naked. I just knew that not having any clothes on just meant you didn't have any clothes on, period. Anyway, the mansion is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and not in a National Nudist Colony Historic Place <laughs> either. So let's just put it that way. Now, the ghosts of the original owner and his two slaves are still seen on the property. And a few years ago, get this, the Sci-Fi Channel's Ghost Hunters paid a visit to the mansion and deemed the property to be actually haunted. All of this has turned the Major Graham Mansion into what a newspaper has called Southwest Virginia's Disney World of Haunted Houses. 
Now, each year at Halloween, as many as 13,000 people visit the grounds of the mansion to see actors from surrounding counties chase people with chainsaws, growl like animals, and generally act out Halloween and be haunted by the ghosts of a pioneer and the two slaves who murdered him. Wow, what a story. Well, you know, and I never thought about that either, about that mansion, and now I think about it, and for a time, I passed by that mansion almost on a regular basis for six months. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's visible right there, and, and it is uh, one of the attractions there in the Withful area. Yes, it is. And, you know, they've been doing a lot of uh, restoration to that mansion as well, and I think they're trying to get it. Uh, uh, of course, it's on the historical uh, registry, as we said, but they're trying to get it restored back, I think, a little bit more to maybe at a little bit more of an original kind of setting sort of thing. But uh, I didn't know that about the Halloween thing that they do every year. But that sounds fascinating. 13,000 people at Halloween? That's that's a pretty sizable number. Oh, it is. As they said, Southwest Virginia's Disney World of Haunted Houses. And that's the thing to say about it. it. That is true. Very true. And those are our Halloween stories, folks. Part of the history of this place we call Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can listen to the podcast at iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash stories of Appalachia. We're also on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Be sure to follow us. Again, thanks for listening. Till next time, take care. Have a happy Halloween and so long, everybody. <laughs>